Hey guys, welcome back to the seventh episode of Get Good at Slay the Spire, a video series where I play Slay the Spire to get better at it. I set myself goals, I execute against them, I achieve them. In the last episode, we were able to beat the game with Watcher on our first try. Um, that means we have now achieved the 50th percentile season goal and the 20th percentile season goal, and now we're setting out to achieve the 10th percentile season goal, meaning only 10% of Slay the Spire players have achieved this goal, and that is to beat the heart with um, ironclad, silent, and defect. Um, that'll give us the the end question mark achievement. Less than ten percent of players um, having played played Aspire have achieved that achievement. So we're starting off this uh, in this episode here with ironclad. So let's get right at it. So I want to talk a little bit about what this actually means. So for us, um, the goal will be to uh, kill the heart with ironclad. Um, I think on the first run, I'm not going to go straight for the hard kill, but I think in terms of a session goal, um, our goal will be to beat three bosses, getting at, to, the, to the, the final part, the fourth act of the game. Um, uh, I will set myself up to actually do the hard run, so we will, we will collect all the keys necessary. I'm not going to skip those because I could beat um, three bosses without the keys. So, like, let's do... Um, our goal will be to beat three bosses and collect all the keys. Um, I also want to use the opportunity in this episode. Let's get started, first of all, here. But I also want to use the, episode, uh, the opportunity in this episode to talk a little bit more about um, how I think about kind of like preparing for killing the heart. Um, uh, let's quickly do this here first before we start talking too much about this. Uh, how, 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 how we'll approach the heart. <clears throat> um, let's see what the map looks like. So this is one thing I like to do um, when I start a new game. <clears throat> I look at the map. Um, why do I do this? Because it'll give us some information about what to expect um, at the beginning of the game. We can, we can look at where the elites are, the rest sites, uh, merchants, stuff like that. Um, and you really, when, you, when you're starting out, you really want to optimize for collecting as many elites and rest sites in Act 1. Um, so you, you do want to seek out these elite fights, um, and you do want to seek out the rest sites. The reason for that is that the elites will give you uh, better cards and relics. So if you beat, defeat an elite, you will get a, a, a rare card, and you will get... Actually, I'm, the rare card I'm not 100% sure, there might only be bosses that guarantee you a rare card, but they certainly have a drop chance at, with the leads. But they will give you a relic. Um, and relics are typically very powerful. So, um, seeking out these fights will improve your deck and your kind of like position in the game going forward. And so you want to do this early. Um, the rest sites you want to seek out, uh, obviously, like if you do, if you need healing, you should, you should heal. Um, but also, they will upgrade cards in your deck. So they will, rest sites and elites are basically just very straightforward ways to guarantee a strong improvement in your deck um, or like for your um, for your setup. <clears throat> so maximizing the number of elites and rest sites that you can kind of uh, that you that you visit in the first act, especially, but also in later acts, um, in act two, less so in act three maybe, but definitely in act one and act two is really critical. Um, so in this case, we we have fundamentally a bunch of different paths that we can go. But if you look at where the elites are, there's one. It's like a, a center path. There's a left path and a right path, kind of like so. Just this being a center path, this being the left path, and there's over here the right path <clears throat> that take you through an elite, and they're exclusive to each other. You you won't be able to get any of these three elites in addition with any of the others um, without the. Um, the traveling, the, the the boot relic that allows you to, to jump around, that that would do that, but... You also want to look at rest sites. So, one thing that stands out here um, pretty quickly to me is these two rest sites, they are in sequence. So you're looking for elites and rest sites in sequence so that you can uh, visit them after another, like on the same path, right? So... For the center path, we have one, an early elite here, 
and with two rest sites, and then uh, another elite here. All right, so that gives us two elites, and if you include this last rest site, it's a total of three rest sites. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. But let's look a little bit more, just make sure that we don't have anything else. So there's on the right side, there's two elites. This is only one rest site because we, we can't get both. We have to choose between one of them. Unless it's no, no additional rest sites on the right. The left is one rest site, two rest sites, and, and one elite. Uh, it is the flaming elite. And we will need to grab the key from him. But I think we can still do that in Act 2. We do not have to do this in Act 1, I believe. Um, uh, I think for Act 1, we'll, we'll focus more on maximizing elites and, and, and rest sites instead of trying to go after the, the flaming elite. Uh, we can do this in Act 2. So yeah, the center path makes a lot of sense. There's also a, a trader here, which is not too early, so we have some opportunity to collect some gold. Um, <clears throat> like, this one is super early. Like, it, we would only have one fight here. Um, but then again, um, if we look at what the whale offers us, right, the obtain 100 gold would be a, a, a decent choice um, if we had an early trader. Um, because that, that gold would have impact much quicker. Um, because obviously it unfolds impact at, at, a, at, a, at a merchant. Um, given that our merchant is so late in the act, I, I don't think I'm going to go with the 100 gold. Um, upgrading a card. Um, upgrading the bash is a really good option. The bash is a really strong card. <clears throat> and upgrading it, I think, is a good choice. Um, lose all gold, obtain a random rare relic. We have 100 gold, and our, the trader is quite far out. So, you do want to have roughly 250 gold when you enter a trader, um, or more, obviously, um, because that'll that'll allow you to, to buy the stronger relics that the trader will have, the merchant will have. Um, I'm actually not 100% sure how, many, how much gold we get from each fight, but I think it's 50, 50 gold or more. But this is 100, 150, 200, 250. So by the time that we reach this merchant, we should have 250 gold again, even if we lose our gold. <clears throat> lose the starting relic. The last one, losing the, the starting relic is, like, is a big sacrifice. And obtaining a random boss relic is obviously very strong, but like there are random boss relics that are just not worth it, I think. So this is like rolling the dice pretty heavily, and I would rather not. Um, so I think the choice is between upgrading a card and losing, 100 gold, uh, losing all our gold and obtaining a random rare relic. <coughs> um, hmm. Let's let's lose the gold. Let's let's see how that fares for us. Okay. Every six turn gain one intangible. Hmm. Instance burner. Um <clears throat> Yeah. I don't know if that's a... if we can really I mean this is a strong effect obviously, but um not sure how much it will actually Help us out here in Act 1. It'll prevent some damage, that's for sure. <clears throat> like, I think the Instance Burner is better on characters like Watcher, that can use that intangible turn to set up like a big kind of rage turn. Um, just as an example. Let's see here. He will hit us for some damage. Which is okay. We will heal it up again. But we won't do any damage to end this turn. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm still recovering a little bit from a cold. So yeah, generally when when fighting um, That was only 18 gold. 
So my math earlier with roughly 50 gold might have been completely off and I might have messed up um, here trading my gold. Um, that's okay though. We'll figure it out. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, let's talk a little bit about, about scaling Ironclad. Um, one obvious way... Wait, so... What do I mean when I talk about scaling? Um, what I mean with talking when I talk about scaling is how can you make... Like, you, you can pick a single card that's a good card. Like, um, and add it to your deck. And that will improve your deck. Uh, because it's a better card now that it's in your deck. But what it won't do is improve all the other cards in your deck that are already in your deck. So when, you, when we're talking about scaling, it, we're talking about cards and mechanics that allows you to, that will allow you to, can it not only improve the deck by adding one good card, but improving the deck by improving all the other cards that you already have. Um, so one great example of that, for example, is, um, is strength. Uh, any strength card really that adds strength, like will make not only the deck better because you add a strong card but will make all the other cards that you already have in your deck better as well. Um. <clears throat> so Heavy Blade is an example for a card that synergizes well with... It, it itself is not a... Like, it won't scale your deck. It, it scales itself well, because strength affects it three times, right? Um, but it synergizes well with other uh, scaling cards, like cards that do add strength. Um, but right now, um, the two cost uh, and the fact that we don't have a single effect that gives us strength, uh, no relic, no cards, um, make Heavy Blade not a good choice. It's, it's a much better choice in Act 2 or in Act 3 um, when you already have a bunch of strength gaining abilities. Um, picking up a Heavy Blade can, can swing really hard in the late game. Um, now, Clash and Warcry. Um, let's talk about Warcry quickly because it has Exhaust and, and Ironclad has a couple of cards that, that trigger off of Exhaust. Um, so Warcry might actually be a good choice just for that. Um, it's otherwise a very kind of... It's a zero-cost card that, that draws a card. So other than with certain bosses or mechanics that kind of penalize drawing cards or penalize playing cards, uh, this is like a... Um, and I used to play Magic, and we, we used to call these cut cantrips. Um, like, it, it replaces itself when you play it, and it's zero cost, so like it's it's almost like it's not in your deck. Uh, then again, its effect, though, putting a card from the hand on top of your draw pile could be considered as a drawback, um, since... Uh, well, it definitely is a drawback. Um, uh, so, so it doesn't quite replace itself, Right, because it undoes a draw. Um, but then again, can also be used as a positive effect if you can set it up in a way that you can put a card on top of your deck that is not useful this turn, but might be useful next turn. Um, and I think it's upgrade draws two cards, which makes it replace itself again. Although, I don't know if I would want to spend a, an upgrade on that. Clash um, might be my choice here, actually. So can only be played if every card in your hand has an attack, deal 14 damage. Um, we have 4 defense and 6 attacks, uh, so like 4 skills and 6 attacks. Um, so most of our cards are already attacks. And then the only situation in which playing Clash becomes impossible is going to be if you draw all 4 defense on one hand. If you draw three defense, you can still play three defense and the clash. Um, most situations, that's going to be acceptable. Um, and like if you draw three defense and two strikes instead, right, you could play like one defense and two strikes, and but you would only do 12 damage. Playing the clash would still do more damage. So it seems like a good card, especially if you if you. Can play it, end up playing it together with the bash. Um, 
still hit really hard. 14 damage kills a lot of enemies outright on Act 1, so... I'm gonna go with that. Depending on how the my deck develops over time, I might regret taking it now. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, look, look at this situation, right? Um, I could bash an attack, obviously. A uh, bash and strike. But he's not gonna attack us, he's gonna do his little car buff. Um, but if I defend, bash, and clash, it's gonna be much more damage. So that's the right play here. Boom, 21 damage. So, there you go. <laughs> uh, next turn, we're gonna have the instance burner active. Yeah, so... We'll just try to do as much damage as possible. Sadly, can't quite kill him. That's okay. Yeah, that's him now. Yes, bye bye. Twenty gold. Yeah, so my math earlier was very much off. Sever soul. Let's look at these cards. Uh, there's another clash. I'm not. I'm not gonna take that. I think. Although they do synergize with each other, because they are attacks. Um, Flame Barrier. Okay, let's talk about the Flame Barrier last. <clears throat> Sever Soul. Um, that synergizes with Clash well as well. And upgraded to 22 damage, but... Two... Two energy... It's, I think it's too expensive. Okay, um, let's talk about Flame Barrier. Gain 12 block whenever you are attacked this turn, deal 4 damage back. Uh, so, not only is this a great amount of block, um, it, well, this, it does, um, conflict with Clash. Um, this will, especially due, due to its two costs, will significantly increase the times when we won't be able to play Clash, um, having this in our deck. But... I think Flame Barrier is just such a good card um, with the 12 block that it gives you. And then whenever you attack, it deals 4 damage back. This is amazing against Heart. Um, one of the Heart's attacks is, like, I think, attacking 12 times for 2 damage. Right? The Heart will just do more damage to itself than it does to you with, with, with the Flame Barrier up. So this is... I mean, it's early to start setting up for heart, but it's just, it's just too good. <clears throat> okay, so let's block a little against the damage, and then. <clears throat> Let's trigger the shell on this guy here. That way, if we can do 15 damage next turn against him, we can still kill him. Otherwise, we'll definitely be able to do 8. I'll just maximize our chance to be able to kill both of them next turn, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, see, so... Oh, it's not quite enough. Oh, no, it is. Yeah. So, we're gonna block to get rid of that so we can play the clash. We're gonna bash him, and we're gonna clash him, and that's it. Ooh. Easy peasy. Okay, let's see. Um, <laughs> these are some good cards that we're getting, I think. Second wind. Exhaust all non-attack cards in your hand. Gain by block, which got exhausted. But this is actually interesting. Because this synod dress with Clash as well. But it's a much better card than whatever the other card was that we didn't take there. Hmm. Keep this in mind for now. Dropkick, D5 damage if the enemy has vulnerable gain power and attack. So I really like Dropkick. Um, and it also allows you to do some infinite combos, actually. <clears throat> so it, it gives you energy and draws a card both important for infinite combos and it doesn't have exhaust like most cards that give you energy exhaust um, thunderclap deal 4 damage apply 1 vulnerable 
I, I really like Honor Club, especially upgraded. Really good. Um, <clears throat> I have only one source of vulnerable right now. And I'm not guaranteed to get more. So I'm not sure if I want to drop kick just yet. Second wind. Second wind kind of wants you to collect more skill non-attack cards, which I don't really want. The clash. Like if I, <clears throat> I guess you, you do exhaust them, so they won't come back. That actually makes it better with the clash. But I think both thunderclap and that one are like my top choice right now. Is the vulnerable? Yeah, I think it. No, it will be removed at the beginning of their turn, right? So, like, the flame barrier won't benefit from it. Let's think about this. Um, I have a total of five skills right now, five non-attack cards. So, like, like what, 40% or what of my deck? So I reasonably will have like one or two. Playing second one for one is just a waste. Playing for two is, is decent. But then... Uh, I might end up taking the Thunderclap. Yeah, the next time I can take the... <coughs> excuse me. Next time I can take the dropkick, because I have enough vulnerable giving cards in my deck. Okay... Yeah... Let's do this... In my turn... I guess this is a situation where I would have preferred something else in Clash. Okay, so <clears throat> he has one hit point. I could kill him, obviously, but I would be a total waste of 13 damage, so I'm gonna Clash the Cultist instead. I could kill him next turn with a strike, or if I get another flame barrier, that will take care of it. Oh, the Thunder Clap. I forgot about that. That act obviously makes this play even better, yeah. Um, okay, I'll bash him. Thunderclap, we got the intangible, so I don't have to worry about his damage. The run is uh, turning out the, the instance burner. It's turning out better than I thought it would. Okay. Yeah, just block the damage, do some damage back. <clears throat> it's gonna be dead soon. Oh, I don't think the... I see, Vulnerable only does more damage from attacks, so the, the Flame Barrier didn't actually do more damage, I think. Okay, yeah. Flame Barrier, then... And just Clash him. That's it. Um, <laughs> okay. Battle trance. Perfect let's try. So perfect strike is an interesting card. It scales with other strikes. So uh, currently we have five different strikes in our deck. Um 
I mean, this will do 16 damage. Yeah. And there are s some strikes that um, Anklad can pick up later in the game. Um, particularly uh, uh, Common Strike is worth mentioning there. But I think if I if I had a pommel strike already, um, that would be a better pick. But I don't have any additional strikes just yet, so I'm not sure if I like it. Um, Battle Trans, draw three cards, can I draw more? I don't have any cards right now that give me additional card draw. Um, but this early in the game, you're typically limited not by hand size, but by energy. So I'm not sure if Battle Trans is a great pick. Uh, if we had more zero cost spells, maybe, but seeing red, I, I don't know, not a good card. <laughs> red isn't much better either. It is an exhaust trigger, but I don't have any other exhaust triggers right now. I might skip or take the perfect strike. I'm not sure. Take the perfect strike that's gonna be the third to two energy cost card. Skip. I'm I'm pretty sure some people will disagree with that skip. <clears throat> Um, ooh, let's see here. I might try to kill him through the curl up. I do think I have enough damage. If I do 8, I will have 5. That's 8. The strike will do. Due to the vulnerable, will do a little bit more. I'm actually not sure if it's enough. I'll start off with it. Um, 9 damage. Yeah, okay, that's enough. Uh, and the reason why I want to do this is because I want to get rid of the damage so that my defend can block most of the damage. Oh. Right. Um, clearly, uh, being able to count energy is uh, beneficial. <laughs> but still, it's probably still the right play. Yeah, um, won't be able to play the Clash, sadly, but I do think Name Barrier up, and then, uh, let's see, two, three, four, maybe eight, two, three, four, nine, four, five, let's do it. <clears throat> Yeah, that's the clap and then do the same area. Take it slow here. Let them kill themselves. <laughs> oh, he's not attacking, I see. That's fine now. Defend, defend, strike, clash, done. So no war cry. An exhaust trigger allows me to get rid of a at the fend or the flame barrier if I have the clash on hand. If I could strike, same rational uh, rationale as before. Close line. Close line is a decent card. 
and I don't love it, but I think I'm gonna take it. Um, yeah. And it's uh, decent against Goblin Knob as well. Um, okay. Actually, the Clash is not good against Goblin Knob. Um, I just realized as well. But Goblin Knob is all about... Like, he's gonna buff himself. Um, I'm gonna give... The buff is gonna give him strength every time you play a skill. Uh, so all these defense, uh, if I played them, they will give him strength. So now you can see how the clash is like not good, right? Like I, I, I don't want to play these because it's gonna give him a bunch of strength. But if I don't play them, I can't play the clash. Uh, okay, so I'll only be able to do the strike. Uh, if I if I played all the defense, you get six strength, which is ridiculous. I don't really want to do that. So, it's, uh... Okay. This one's better. Let's think about this. 50 more damage from... 50% more damage from attacks. I'll put, give him 8. And then this will be 9. So it's 17, what's the mat? 29, right? Yeah, no, 39. And the next turn, we'll get a bunch more damage as well. Like if we have three strikes, I will put it at 27. Um, but we will get like 28 damage of all in that. Close line will prevent 25% of that damage. They say it's a damage race, right? Um, so close line prevents 25% of damage, bash does 50% more damage. The bash is just a better option here. Um, it does four damage, four base damage more, but uh, that. <laughs> and then, I mean, I could end up with a really good hand next turn that has like no defense and a clash. And I still have the attack potion, I can so grab another attack to maybe finish him off even next turn. Okay. Um, that's 18. 21 is 39. That'll kill him. Perfect. Boom. Yes. Enemies with normal will take 75% more damage by number 50. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, I like that. I like that. Twin strike, clash, combust. Hmm. I don't really... I mean, this is not bad, but it's... It's against hard and some other bosses. This is not going to do a lot. Clash. It's probably a good choice at this point. Um, pretty high density on attacks. Two skills. Um, Twin Strike. Twin Strike is decent as well. It scales well with strength. You don't have any strength yet. Yeah, Clash. And Clash scales really well with um, Vulnerable as well. Just has a, a lot of punch in one card. Okay. Okay. So, <clears throat> this might be our ability to get uh, enough gold together here. There's two rest sites and one 
chest, one treasure chest. Um, I think 100 gold might not be enough to get us to 250 for this trader. Um, and this will give us 175 extra gold, and we can remove this curse again at the trader for less. Um, we definitely won't be able to remove a card in addition to buying like an expensive um, relic or anything like that if we if we wanted to remove a different card. So I think this is the right choice here, and it'll do some damage in in upcoming battles, but we don't have any battles, so I think we're good. Let's do that. Um, we have enough hit points. We don't need to. Um, we'll do the uh, the recall at a later point. That's too early. We don't need to do it immediately. Let's rather upgrade a card. So I think my initial th immediate thought is bash. Um, flame barrier would be good as well. Clash is so so. On the clap. With only two enemies, it's a six additional damage. Flame barrier is two, four block and two damage. Bash is two damage and vulnerable. Close line. Well, we have we have two upgrades um, on this path. Probably gonna go with. I'm, de I'm definitely gonna go with Bash. Definitely gonna upgrade Bash. Um, let's see what we get else here. 72 gold. Let her open that. Every time you play three skills in a single turn, do five before enemies. Um, well, we don't have a very high skill density. <coughs> Excuse me. Right now. Uh, and because of the clash, that might not change. Uh, because there's two clashes, that might not change. So, I'm actually not sure if I like the letter opener. So, I might just take the key. Um, it's really too early to take the key, but taking a relic that doesn't synergize with the deck instead doesn't really make a lot of sense either. Okay, the, the two choices that we have now is our close line off line barrier. I don't think it's worth the little clash. The thunderclap could be. But um no, I think the flame barrier is definitely better. The close line is probably better. Two damage, an additional weak, four block, two damage. I think I'm gonna go with the flame barrier. It just seems I played it every time I drew it so far. Um, the additional block will definitely help moving forward, and the additional damage as well. So, okay, let's see if we made a good choice here. Oh, bottled flame. <laughs> Interesting. Treasure chest, tiny chest. Dolly's mirror. In flame. There's a good option to scale our damage. Rock kick would be a good choice at this point as well. I think we have three sources of vulnerable. Two. bottle if we bottle something. I like a bottle and a bash, but I'm not sure if that's... Enlightenment. 
it just cost zero for cards. I mean, that's um, <laughs> interesting. start every fight with a bash. I don't know. Oh. That's 250. Leaves me with 200 gold, roughly. 125. Do the inflame and the drop kick. And the inflame and the pummel. the right choice here. Let's synergize as well with Vulnerable, which I want to have more of in my deck. And I've bottled the, the Bash, so... Okay, we now have the choice between getting two more rest sites or an Elite and a rest site. Um, I think I'm gonna go with the Elite. I'm, I'm gonna get six, 12 more heal, which puts me back at 70 if I don't get too much damage. If they get too much damage, they can still rest here. But don't. Yeah, let's, let's go with the lead. Um. Flash. Okay, let's see here. Flame barrier. Let's play the clash with the thunder clap. Vulnerable on them. Um, oh. Just up on my okay. That wasn't very smart. It wasn't. That wasn't very smart either because he's not gonna attack me. <laughs> wow. If your deck is so good that you can do like all the misplays you want and still win. I don't, I don't think I like anger. It's, no. Intimidate or Sever Soul? I do like Intimidate. Sever Soul at 16 damage. 20 damage, but it's 2. It costs 2, that's it's just not 
It's too expensive. No, I'm gonna go with this for a bit. So what does the upgrade to intimidate? Too weak? Play in flame and flame barrier. I'm not playing my bash. Or I bash him. With ten. Let's three shield up. Kill him with a strike. Not have the in flame. Or I in flame, bash him for twelve. Kill him next turn. Um, if I draw a thunderclap, that'll be easy. I'll take five though. Oh, I inflame. Strike him for six. Put him at eight. Put up the defend. Oh, I inflame and flame barrier. Put him at ten. And. will get block on his turn. Hmm. <laughs> I'll strike him. That's my eight. Set up flame barrier. That's in my three. What? Have the flame with the bash up. No, I, I want the flame. The cult is just, it's going to do a lot of damage if I leave, give him too much time. So I'm gonna inflame fashion. Blue piece of potion, I guess. energy left. Such a waste. The attack gun costs zero, so that's fine. Hmm. Just know it's hard to be play. If I had a uh, the Thunderclap scales with it, well, but none of my other cards do. Um, if I had a Twin Strike or a Pummel or something like that, the Flex would certainly be a higher pick here. 
Heavy blade. If I have my inflame down, then heavy blade will do 20 damage. Still seems too early for that. I mean, 20 damage is a good amount of damage. Then... Only if I have it down. Otherwise it's just 4 HP. Which is still... As much as a clash. But for 2 energy. Uh, let's try the Infernal Blade. And I think I'm gonna skip the Ancient Portion for now. These all seem... Better. Potentially. Just go straight forward. Slam back so it doesn't hit us hard. Figured out how to use Stone Calendar well. Rampage. <clears throat> hmm. Impervious skin 30 block. Rampage is, um, I think, better if you, I mean, if you bottled it, it'd be decent, I guess, with uh, some headbutts. I don't have any headbutts yet. I think I'll go with the heavy blade. Between the incense burner, what's the boss? I think. Oh, Hexa Ghost. Um. Hmm. Should be fine, right? What would I upgrade? What's the upgrade? The zero cost. Too weak. Maybe the flame. Yeah, I think the play makes more sense. <coughs> Let's see, Mr. Hexaghost. Let's get the random attack first.
Additional damage, I can also get the attack potion going. I guess I do have a heavy blade, I should have waited. Yeah, well, that's fine. There it is. Whatever. Stone colors are almost triggered. Okay. <clears throat> Jogging out. Whenever you gain block deal 5 damage to a random enemy, eh. Brutality at set of you, to run with 1 HP and draw a card. Hmm. Lodgen and deal 32 damage. Uh, I do like brutality. Uh, drawing these extra cards, especially as into Act 2, I hopefully get a energy um, a relic. I have a dropkick, intimidate, some clashes, so like low cost. Yeah, I like brutality. And if I can bottle that... Mm -hmm. Sweet, sweet, sweet. I hate the crown. <laughs> ah, no. Whenever you open a non boss just attain a curse. No longer smith. So... There's two more number chests. Right. Is there one in Act 4? No, I think there's only merge on the rest side. Sure, let's do the press key. First boss down. One key acquired. This looks good. This looks like the one that I want to go for. Um, one elite, two elites, three elites on this center path. Um, one, two campsites, three campsites. Ah, oh, that's perfect. I mean, I. More. I'm gonna get one of these two here as well. So that's a kind of no-brainer here. Um, merchants, two there. So another one in the back. No. So I might pass by one of them, but I cannot afford another relic. Probably. This event here gives me something good. So yeah, I can go here, 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 there, 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 there. there. That's about it. 
Um, do I have an option for upgrades? Heavy blend with an option. Yeah. Let's do it. Oh yeah, these guys. Inflame, bash, clash? Or thunderclap? It's actually gonna hurt. <clears throat> Do no count. Okay. And then bash the little one. And the clap. Clash on that. Yeah, that works. I actually want to see what the... Let's do him instead then. Let's see um, how the, the flame barrier works with the attacks. Okay, it does six every, six every time, okay, yeah. So it's strong. Strikes, flex. The heavy blade flex gives up six damage. Twin strikes with the flame is sixteen damage. Sorry, flex. But um, this is also kind of a damage race here. That's uh, literally what the uh, Infernal Blade does, though. Um, yeah, let's block. Thunderclap. I'll kill him. Oh, 
damage. Or... <clears throat> okay. Now I'm going to take the flex, I think. Upgrade clothesline. Isn't bad, but I have one already. I don't know if I want another one. The pummel strikes would be great right now. War cry, I don't know. That doesn't do a lot. Other than putting a skill back on top, I guess. But itself is a skill too, so. Hmm. Sure. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Seeking an attack. Hmm. None of the cards. I like a lot. None of them I like. Ah. Fear potion might be something to take. Attack potion. Let's hmm. see if I send Random skills. It's gonna be defense, obviously. The flame barrier is already upgraded. So, no. Banner ah. drop. Nah. Secret weapon. Put an attack mid drop pile into your hand. Now, this is more interesting, I think. What would it get? Thunderclap. Twin strike. Heavy blade. Clash. Mm. Not great. Not great, no. Oh exhaust cards, get this card a bit of time. We really have a lot of exhaust cards. Ah. Let's move a block, maybe? Actually, do need some more block cards then. Getting a lot of damage oh. already. Maybe a strike. Although that would make my clashes worse. Yeah. Let's just play. In front of you sits an altar to a forgotten god. Atop the altar sits an ornate female statue with arms outstretched. She calls out to you, demanding sacrifice. Rest here then. Let's do that. <laughs> Another. <laughs> oh, I kind of regret having bought some random cut removal, I guess it was, huh? I might take the feed actually. Yeah. <laughs> Give me some additional hit points over time. Ten damage. Or one is just not bad. Um I will still need to recall at some point, but I think for now I will rest. I 
critical stats whenever you receive attack damage from this enemy and a wound to describe now. Um, if I want to clash, I would have to play the defend and then flame. Definitely gonna play the and flame. Uh, but I think it'll be better to bash. Will it be better? Preferable. No, I think I'll take the. Hmm. I did just rest. It's 18 damage. It's still gonna be 13. Now let's get back. Oh, I can. Oh, I can still. Oh, I keep forgetting to have more energy. Okay. That's a pretty straightforward decision then. <laughs> Tangible next round. Let's do this. Let's see what the infernal blade gives us. Bash. Okay. had a feed in my hand there that I should have definitely used. Every three turns get additional energy. Okay. Power potion. Okay. I'm gonna take the uppercut plus. Yes, it's an additional vulnerable source for drop cakes, and it's just a really good card of all. Okay, I don't think I need to rest. I think I can upgrade. What do I upgrade? Close line is an option. Oh. Who talks about bottling it? <laughs> I th this is a strong option. I do like upgrading the flex as well. Bring the feed is okay. Bring the heavy blade is strong. Saves an energy. Eh. Too weak. Hmm. Three damage isn't worth it. Brutality. <sighs> it's just too good making it an eight. Like that just gives this benefit gives this benefit to me on every fight on turn one. Yeah. It'll give me a curse. Okay, let's see. Yeah, 
rid of that that curse. I love the armaments, I love the armaments, and upgraded armaments is so good. And I do not have a whole lot of upgraded parts. Um, there's a lot of stuff that can be upgraded. So I do need to rest. I might not even make it here. Even with the rest. gonna buff. this turn though.
Exhausted. So that is a curse card. Do the combust. Nice. Those actually make make a lot of uh, sense for me here. Pummel strike is nice. Also good with nunchucks. Yeah, pummel strike. There you go. Let's see, twenty-four health. Let's go the right path. A long line of hooded figures can be seen entering an unassuming cathedral. Naturally, you join the line and are quickly surrounded by cultists. They ignore you as they gleefully chant and wave their weapons around. Murder, 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 ka, 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 murder. You eye a donation box. Okay, nothing than gold. Obtain a ritual dagger. Do you have to never fail upon any increase? It's cut out by three. Lose six HP. Ooh, okay. Hmm. <laughs> no risk, no fun, huh? That's not very smart. But... Uh, we're at the end of Act 2. No, that doesn't make sense. I'll, I'll go with the gold. Let's play it a little bit safer here. Smartest move I've ever made here. Heavy blade. Good night. <laughs> okay, 
and half block and half damage. Hmm, combine seven damage. Seven damage. I don't like so from my hand. And it's decent against a single enemy. skip and I think I will rest Chaos does for us. <laughs> very, very chaotic. Um, that's seventeen plus twelve is twenty nine. Strike and a strike and a flash. I don't know what I wish have played. So gonna strike him. Yeah, 
with it. Clash, Homo Strike. I think that should probably kill him though. Yeah, the clash of the Bye bye. Let's see here. <clears throat> Corruption skills cost is zero whenever you play a skill exhausted. Bludgeon and bludgeon with 32 damage and then juggernaut out whenever you can block the battle for that. All my skills already cost zero. <laughs> yeah, that's bludgeon. Thirty-two damage. It's just not a great card. I don't know. It's not great. None of these things are great. Moving in block. Don't have any relics that give me block either. Do I? No. No, no, no. I don't want any of these. Skipping on a rare card. Okay, what's what's going on here? Decay, remove two cards from your deck. You can no longer obtain potions. Elites drop an additional relic when defeated. Um... <clears throat> I still have a few elites in front of me. I have two cards in my deck. Move this curse. And another defend. Two elites in a row on the left, then on the right. And my rest sides are in the center. There's a few on the right, and a late trader on the right, so early traders on the All the in the air. On the left. I could use an early trader. So two elites and. Two rest sides, or two elites, and three rest sides. I'm still missing the rest side key, I think. But if I go to left, I would get an early merchant. Which I can buy a relic from, so that's basically like another elite. Although... I won't have a merchant after... after this treasure, um, in that case. Uh, and that means I can't remove the curse that will pick up in the treasure. If 
crossing over the any sands. It's over here. Give me another rest side. We'll put the four rest side. I missed the first lead. So we only have one lead. But I will get two merchants. An early and a late merchant. An early merchant could be a relic. The late merchant could be a card removal. And it will give me another rest side, which means I can get the key. So I think I will do that. Go this path here. Yep, let's do that. the twin strikes or will I just bash the twin strike? Thirteen plus sixteen plus eight is twenty-four is thirty-seven. Let's um bash on armor twins. <clears throat> hmm. Hmm. Seven damage for forty seven. Yeah, it's gonna be another clashing strike. But I'll do clashing common strike and I can upper cut this guy. Look, I won't be able to use ah, if I another clash or something. Hmm. Do common strike first. No, then I won't, might not be able to play the clash anymore. Let's do this. Hmm. Let's do this. Oh, the non will trigger. So I'll also be able to strike. I forgot about the regenerating. <laughs> First,
enough, but I, I just thought it would have been enough. Seven. Seven strikes. Six. Fourteen. It's Twenty damage. Four. Thirty-four. Upgraded. No. Wait. Thirty-seven. Twenty-seven. Hmm. I mean, not bad. Not bad. enemies T together with the bottle bash not too bad oh whenever you play three attacks in a single turn gain one next time I'm, I will be able to trigger this regularly the question is just what I mean my, my armaments and my my flame barrier will give me block, but hmm. it's not exactly broken. Ah. Never shovel your draw power against X block. What will shuffle my draw pile? I do have another trader later, so I think I'll save the rest of my money. Burning pack is nice, but I already have the uh, the innate brutality, so I'm gonna draw a bunch of cards. That's fine. That's fine. I'll save my money for the trader later. Okay, let's cross over. Thank you. 
Gonna be able to play this clash. The days are um, messing that up.
that wasn't just from other ones. Okay. I should have. Yeah. That's what can I have about the feet, maybe? <clears throat> I 
Oh, I actually might take the second one. No. Actually, works well with the kunai. Um, and uh, to remove some hundred cards. But how often would I play it for zero? Actually, that's unlikely to happen. Whatever cut is exhausting. We have a little bit of exhaustion at speed. We're gonna play it. Strike. Wait, I have two upgrade headbutts? I didn't realize that. Um. Armaments. Heavy blade. Yeah, I think the armaments. That's just so good. <laughs> Just upgrades everything else in the deck. Lose all gold, gain a relic. That's gonna give me the red mask, right? that cleave earlier? I like I did. A lot of damage incoming here. Hmm. That last turn. Still gonna play it. I think. To be able to clash. Yeah, but no strength points.
Let's check it. As you head upwards, hopping from one floating shape to another, you slip and you begin to fall. While in free fall, you consider your options. Land safely with your greatest techniques, channel power to survive the fall, strike the wall to hang on to it. What? Using the clothesline, I can... it's fine. Not great, but fine. I want to keep doing this. <clears throat> um, Smith now, Smith later, Smith now. I still need to recall. Cannot forget. But I guess the limit break is just. You gotta go. You gotta be upgraded. Merchant. Okay, let's see what do we have here. Pair upon pickup is max HP by 10. White beast statue, potions always appear in combat rewards. Orange pellets, whenever you play a power, attack, and skill in the same turn, remove all your debuffs. What are the cards? Fire breathing, flex, disarm, searing blow. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go with the disarm. Because it's good against the heart. Um, the same could be said about the dark shackles here. Wow, it's it's so much better than this arm. <laughs> it's just it's just plain better than this arm. Oh, this is only for one turn. But still, it's still a good option. Hmm. I guess um, the removal 125. Let this arm. It's like a little bit more than 200. That the disarm. Have Fifty-six left. Could grab another flex. It's not the greatest, but it's actually doing a lot of lifting my deck right now. So, and if I can upgrade it with an armament, it's actually kind of broken. Um. Grab the key and then either upgrade or rest on the next one. What would we upgrade anyway? Hmm. Barely worth it. Heavy blade is still a good option. Bumble strike is a good option. Let's recall the key. 
and then we have flexibility on, on this one. <coughs> Summon another one. I don't know how to deal with three of them. Let's arm all this good stuff here. Choice here. It's a down to eleven. Well, it won't be fifteen. Kill one, but I do want to kill this guy because he hits the hardest. I think I'm just gonna go with the twenty. at a later point. And the rest has a little bit more energy. Flame barrier, so super so. Do I take another flame barrier? That seems like a good choice against a heart anyway, so the answer is yes. Um, I'll heal two more and I still have the blood potion here. Yeah. What do I upgrade if I upgrade? The heavy blade, the pommel strike. I'll heal afterwards anyway, so I think I'll 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 be with plastic with the upgrade. I can use the buff potion if I need to. So the, the heavy blade is gonna get upgraded.
<clears throat> that wasn't a particularly good start. I was hoping I would get the but sorry. I'm sure that this one applied properly. Okay. So we we didn't. I think this is the first time that we didn't achieve our, our session goal um, of beating three three bosses. Um, what a disappointment. But you know, uh, yeah, we haven't even unlocked all the cards with with Ironclad yet. So um, we just unlocked the Wild Strike, evolve. And emulate um but hey guys uh even though we didn't achieve a session goal this time thanks a lot for watching um and looking forward to seeing you guys next time uh, for our next attempt with ironclad at beating three bosses unlocking the keys and hopefully making it to, to a successful hard run at some point if you like this video please leave a thumbs up uh, if you don't want to miss me uh, at my next attempt at a hard run with ironclad please make sure to subscribe and hit the little bell icon if you want to get notified 
as soon as I upload new videos, which I do at least twice a week. So looking forward to seeing you guys next time.